Ann Modis. I'm the lead pastor at Living Spirit United Methodist Church. Welcome to our 37th annual Living Spirit Neighborhood Barbecue, where hundreds of you come together every year to celebrate summer, to connect with old friends, as well as meet new people in the community, and of course have some darn good barbecue. Except this year, as you know, we can't meet in person. Um, we can't invite you to gather for our good barbecue, but we invite you to enjoy our barbecue virtually. And although we can't directly serve you our ribs, our coleslaw and beans, we can offer you our recipes as we divulge our secrets to great barbecue and how we prepare the food and cook it. That's the secret. Um, we, and we invite you to use, your, use our recipes and cook your own barbecue. And when you do, send us your pictures. We'd love to post them on Facebook or our webpage. And of course, this barbecue has always been a fundraiser for the ministries of Living Spirit Church, and we invite you to give. Um, but this year, half of the proceeds of the barbecue will be donated to, to the food shelf at Sabathany Community Center. Um, in a little bit, you will hear from their interim director, Mary Merrill, uh, and as well as uh, their Sherry Green, who is the family services manager and oversees the food shelf. So I invite you to give um, $12 per whatever amount of barbecue you would buy or how many slabs you would buy. I invite you to buy, purchase that virtually, of course. Um, it's $25 for a slab of ribs and $12 for a whole meal. Or just simply donate because the money will go to feed our community. And now, on to our recipes. <laughs> And I believe it's about a three or four day affair because they got to buy the ribs, they got to trim the ribs, uh, they got to prepare them, and then they stay up all, all night or most of the night cooking them, and then they sell them the next day. And I, I, I might be wrong on exactly how many days, but I think it's a three or four day affair. So when we come to Oakland, and we have served ribs, the men have put in a lot of work to, to, to make that possible. The recipes we use are geared to serving a large group of people, in case you want to invite your whole neighborhood, but we'll also scale it down to a more realistic amount for your family. It's a three-day process to prepare and cook the ribs. On day one, the slabs are soaked for 24 hours in a 35-gallon plastic barrel with a mixture of water, two cups of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of liquid smoke, and about five pounds of ice to help pull some of the blood out of the pork slabs. And we'll often come back at night and again the next morning to add more ice to make sure that the barrels stay cool. On day two, once the meat has soaked, we pat it dry and cut the brisket off, which is the curved part of the rack, so that we end up with two separate pieces. The brisket will become the tips, and then the rack of ribs takes on a more rectangular shape, which helps the slabs cook more evenly. Next, we season the slabs lightly with meat tenderizer and let it stand for five to 10 minutes before placing it in a tub filled with Italian dressing, not the light variety. The meat is then placed into the refrigerator overnight. And on day three, the meat is cooked via the direct method with red hot coals, but no fire. And each slab cooks for approximately 90 to 120 minutes, depending on its thickness, and the briskets 
cook for only 60 minutes. Once cooked, let's stand for 10 minutes, cover with sauce, and eat. But the barbecue actually began, I think, in about 1983. And that was a long time ago, uh, about 37 years ago. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. But uh, person uh, named Ed Walker came by uh, our house uh, one Sunday afternoon and he came to talk to my husband Sam who uh, <laughs> who is uh, has been uh, deceased for 10 years uh, he we had both attended church at Oakland that morning and he came by after we had eaten dinner and he wanted to talk to my husband who I called Rich, mm -hmm. his real name was Samuel, uh, to see if uh, my husband thought it would be all right for him um, to propose to the church that they would have a barbecue and he did barbecuing professionally uh, and we knew that and he wanted to lend his skills to sponsoring a barbecue at church if my husband thought that was uh, okay and my husband thought it was a great idea and I think they went to the church council and of course they uh, said okay because they were happy to have a fundraising effort and on Sunday, June 12th, 1983, the first neighborhood barbecue was held at one of Living Spirit's predecessor congregations, Oakland Avenue United Methodist Church. This first barbecue started with four cases and approximately 120 pounds of pork ribs. Since then, it has grown significantly. And in recent years, we've had as many as 30 cases and 1,300 pounds of ribs. Effort. And I think, I can't remember how many ribs they bought but they had no experience in doing that and Ed Kenny led it uh, and they stayed up all night barbecuing the ribs mm -hmm. and I think they sold out the first time at about two o'clock and so they knew after that that they would have to buy more ribs. Uh, all of the cookers we used have been made by the men of the church. The barbecue began with Ed's cooker which was capable of cooking 20 slabs at a time. And we now have four cookers that can each cook 14 to 18 slabs at a time and one small cooker for the brisket and tips. To cook 30 cases of meat, it takes about 10 to 12 hours. Uh, it was the first time that me and a church got together and did something together. And that was a, a lot, it built in a lot of men supporting uh, each other and supporting the younger, uh, young men in the church. And so it not only raised uh, money, but it made men at Oakland feel a lot closer to each other. I would agree with that. So it became a social affair and a work affair for the men. It became a community affair because we were in a community that responded to the ribs. And we uh, found a successful fundraising uh, affair. And so I think in spite of uh, people being really, uh, important to the barbecue. Leon really assumed a lot of, res Leon Patterson really assumed a lot of responsibility. And it's been nice uh, to see as uh, people uh, 
do a lot of work in the uh, uh, during the barbecue, and then when they pass the scene, some some of the young men come and assume a role in helping that happen. And in the early 2000s, Leon Patterson and Johnny Jones took over as the main leaders and coordinators of the barbecue. Both Johnny and Leon have died, and the leadership has been passed on to their sons, Terrell Patterson and Jabari Jones, along with Trevor Holmberg. Well, part of it is that it really is the best fork. I don't know what it is about it, but somehow it gets the meat better and it's way sturdier than all the other ones. Um, but more importantly, it was a fork that Leon always used. Um, and Leon was such an integral part of the barbecue um, and a huge part of its success and its longevity um, and a close friend and a really excellent mentor for so many of us. Um, so to be able to use something that was, you know, so closely associated with him um, is really special for me. So, I hope that it never ends. <laughs> I hope that it goes on forever. <laughs> I like coming and in, uh, eating the ribs, but I also know how much work that is uh, for the men to get together and do that. But they seem to still have a great time like my husband did, and so I think it's going to go on forever. <laughs>
to think, talk about how they've been able to modify the program, reimagine it, and still provide the services to get needed food resources out to this community. Thank you. My name is Sherry Green. I am the manager of family services here at Sebastian Community Center. Um, I've been in this position for about a year. Um, and like Mary said, we did have to reimagine during COVID and during the George Floyd murder, how we were going to um, situate our food shelf and make sure that it stayed open for our community. We serve 42,000 people a year, and that was just too big a task to, to shut down. Um, we had to make sure that we are able to serve our families, um, mainly African-American and Latino, but we also have a Somalian and white community as well. Um, we had to make sure that we had to, uh, we, that we made this, this happen for Sabathony and made this happen for the community. Um, one of the things that I love about how we're doing this is that we started inside and then we had to reimagine things um, by, by taking this whole process outside. Um, rain or shine, we're here and we're serving everybody in this community. Um, but one of the great things that I see and great things that I hear is people that say thank you for continuing to do this service uh, from the families that come up that I see every week. Um, thank you for continuing to do the service and thanking you, thank you for finding a way to continue to do it. If it was not for Second Harvest and the food group and the donations from our community, this church included, then we would not be able to do this. But um, I'm very, very pleased about how this process is going. We will continue the same process through COVID and maybe reimagine how we get back to our service. But right now we are doing what we can do for our community just to stay open. We just want to say that we are so pleased that Living Spirit has come uh, together to collaborate with us to, to look at how can we serve our community in deeper uh, ways than we currently are. Recognizing the trauma that we're in, recognizing that it will only take um, all of us banding together as community, all of us looking at uh, the main issues that have plagued our community for years, the very health and safety of all of our residents. We can share in that and we can be a part of empowering our community to get together and try to resolve some of these longstanding issues. This is our time to do that this year. And so thank you, Living Spirit, for coming together with us to think about how we work with community to solve some of our problems. To start, you take a large mixing bowl, you put the 64 ounces of mayonnaise, three quarters of a cup of white sugar, two tablespoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of salt. Mix that all together. Then you put in your five pounds of cabbage. You add in the two cups of chopped red cabbage and the one cup of chopped red onion. Mix it all together, cover it, put it in the refrigerator to chill. This recipe will feed anywhere from 25 to 30 people. Uh, the barbecue has been part of our family's life and the life of our congregation for more than 30 years, but of course, 11 years at Loving Spirit. So it is just one of the highlights of summer when we connect and see not only members, but extended family of members, um, previous members and neighbors and others who care about the ministry of this congregation. So it is an extra special time of visiting and relaxing and enjoying tremendously good barbecue. Um, 
it makes me think about the, the strong community here at the, at the church. And, um, you know, it's a good time for everyone to get together and just, you know, do what everyone loves doing, which is eating and everyone getting together and having a good time and raising money. And it's just, it's, it's really, for me, it's all about community, family, and friends. And so my husband loved talking to the younger guys. And my husband had a, a condition in which it kind of robbed him of his strength. But the people at the barbecue wanted him to come and sit and just talk to them, even though he could not work. And that was really important to him. Uh, you know, some people are really gregarious and they have a lot of fun, but my husband was a more serious sort of uh, character. introduce to you our new associate pastor, Pastor Sean Moore. He comes to us with a background in church planting, a church growth, and a passion for justice. Um, Sean, tell us about your experience with the barbecue. So my very first experience took place last year, brought my whole entire family here. So we had coleslaw, we had beans, we had ribs. It was absolutely uh, a really fantastic time. And I was very much hoping to be able to see all of you this year to introduce myself but with COVID, I cannot do so. So uh, I'm gonna ask for you to uh, buy as many of the virtual meals and slabs that you possibly can. Sean, I didn't hear anything about, the, our cooks didn't say anything about our barbecue sauce recipe. That's correct. And that's because we're gonna give you all of the secrets except for this one. We want you to come back next year and literally try it in person. So we won't be divulging uh, the barbecue sauce recipe. Yeah, again, our virtual slabs are um, slabs are 25 bucks a piece. Our virtual meals are 12 bucks a piece, or whatever you would wish to donate. It all goes to feed our community. So. See you next year. See you next year.